evening. On behalf of the commissioners and staff, I would like to welcome you to the January 27th City of Roseville Planning Commission meeting. If you could please put all electronic devices on silent at this time. Agendas are available at the end of the staff table, and if you plan to speak at tonight's meeting, please complete a blue speaker card and return it to the staff table. As a reminder, Planning Commission meetings are broadcast live and replayed throughout the week on Consolidated Communications and Comcast. I will now call the meeting to order. Lupi, can I have a roll call? Yes, Commissioner Brashears is absent, excused. Commissioner Caparuso is absent, excused. Commissioner Covington? Here. Commissioner Hagenjos? Here. Commissioner Pryor? Here. Vice Chair Martin? Here. And Chair Jensen? Here. Commissioner Martin, could you lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was trying to get it out of your way. <laughs> Could we start with staff introductions, please? Yes, good evening, Commissioners. Lupi Nelson, Recording Secretary. Good evening, Commissioners. Joe Speaker, Assistant City Attorney. Good evening, Chair Jensen and Commissioners. Greg Bitter, Planning Manager. Good evening, Chair Jensen and Commissioners. Derek Ogden, Senior Planner. Good evening, Shelby Maples, Associate Planner. And good evening, Matt Todd, Principal Engineer. Thank you. So we'll move on to public comment. The public comment period is a time for anyone who would like to address the Commission on any item that is not on tonight's agenda. When addressing the commission, please state your name for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address an item that is not on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, I will go ahead and close the public comment period and move on to the consent calendar. The consent calendar consists of routine items that may be approved under one motion as recommended in the staff reports. However, each item may be considered separately upon a request by the audience, planning commission, or staff Tonight's consent item consists of one item, the meeting minutes from the December 16th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. And I believe, Greg, you have some comments on Yes, that. Chair Jensen, I'd just like to let the Commission know we were um, informed that there was an error on the original set of minutes that went out with the packets. Um, you have a revised uh, set of minutes that um, corrects that error before you tonight. So when taking action on this item, we'd like to make sure that it's taking action on the, the minutes that are um, provided in the hard copy for you. Is there a motion from the commission to accept the revised minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the revised minutes. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner higgin -Jones? Yes. Commissioner Covington? Yes. Commissioner Pryor? Yes. Vice Chair Martin? Yes. And Chair Jensen? Yes. Next on the agenda is requests and presentations. Before we begin, I want to review the meeting procedures. First, we'll hear the staff presentation. And we'll take questions from the commission. I will then open the public hearing and the applicant can make a presentation. Then I will open the public comment period and the public will have an opportunity to speak. We will then close the public comment period and the applicant will be given an opportunity to provide a rebuttal if necessary. I will then close the public hearing and the commission may ask questions of staff. And finally, the commission will consider the item and make a decision based on the information provided in the report from staff and the testimony presented during tonight's meetings. The first item is 6.1, is a request that the Planning Commission recommend City Council approve a specific plan amendment and development agreement amendment for 3301 Santucci Boulevard, for the record, file number PL21-0289. And we have Shelby this evening. Could we please have your presentation, Shelby? Yes, you may. Thank you, Chair Jensen and Commissioners. My name is Shelby Maples, and I have a presentation for you on the KT20, KT30 Affordable Unit Transfer Project in the Sierra Vista Specific Plan area. The proposed project includes a specific plan amendment and the first amendment of the baseline PNR development agreement to allow the transfer of the affordable housing obligation from KT20, a medium density residential parcel, to KT30, a high density residential parcel in the Sierra Vista specific plan area. With this transfer, the project also proposes a change in the type of the units that will be built. The current allocation shows that 31 middle income purchase units will be built on KT20. However, these units will be reconfigured as 16 low income and 15 very low income rental units. The staff report includes red line changes to the table and the map for the Sierra Vista specific plan to show the proposed changes and also includes some cleanup from previously approved projects. 
This shows the red line changes to the specific plan affordable housing allocation table. As you can see, KT20 is eliminated from the table altogether and the allocations for KT30 are modified. After the transfer, the parcel will have an obligation to build a total of 77 very low and 78 low income units. The proposed changes to the affordable housing map removes KT20 from the designated parcels. If the proposed project is approved, the overall number of affordable units in the Sierra Vista specific plan will remain the same, but the number of low and very low income rental units will increase. As discussed in the staff report, the city has an obligation to provide a certain number of affordable housing units in a variety of income categories, as assigned by the state with the regional housing needs allocation. The city of Roseville currently has a surplus of units in the middle income category, but a deficit of units in the low and very low income categories. The transfer as proposed will help reduce the city's deficit. The proposed project is therefore consistent with the goals and policies of the Sierra Vista specific plan and the general plan, and per the findings for a development agreement amendment will provide a benefit to the city. Notice of the project was sent out to neighbors and property owners within 300 feet of the affected parcels. One comment was received after the staff report was published, which was, set, which was sent out to the Planning Commission today. This identified minor corrections such as tabulation errors, which have since been made by staff. In conclusion, the proposed project is consistent with the goals and policies of the general plan and Sierra Vista specific plan, and the development agreement amendment is in conformance with the public health, safety, and welfare, and will not affect the orderly development of the property or preservation of property values. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission take action to recommend to the City Council to approve the specific plan amendment and the development agreement amendment. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Shelby. Commissioners, are there any questions of staff at this time? We'll start at this end. Okay, seeing no questions, I'll go ahead and open the public comment period. Um, or actually, have the commissioners will open the public comment period and have the applicant come forward. And Chair Jensen, I think you also want to open the public hearing as well. I'd open the public hearing, That's correct. Th yes. Chair Jensen, Planning Commissioners, Chad Roberts, Hefner Law, on behalf of the applicant. I don't have anything to add to Shelby's report last night. Um, I agree with everything that's in there. Thank you very much for st staff to, uh, for, for all of their work and, and for your time and consideration this evening. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here and more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this item? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Commissioners, are there any other questions or comments uh, that you have before we take a motion on this item? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to Recommend the City Council approve the specific plan amendment and recommend the City Council approve the development agreement amendment for S SVSP parcel KT-20 and KT-30 affordable unit transfer for 3301 Santucci Boulevard, file number PL21-0289. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Commissioner Covington has made the motion and Commissioner Hagen Jost has seconded the motion. Lupi, can we have a roll call? Yes. Commissioner Covington? Yes. Commissioner Pryor? Yes. Vice Chair Martin? Yes. Commissioner Hagen Jost? Yes. And Chair Jensen? Yes. The motion is approved. Okay. Item 6.2 is a request for an approval of a major project permit, stage one modification a major project permit stage two for 7890 Painted Desert Drive for the record PL21-0252. And Kenny, can we have your presentation, please? Yes, good evening, Chair Jensen and Commissioners. My name is Kenny Shallow, Associate Planner, here to present the ACE Hardware Project. The project site is located within the Campus Oaks Town Center development, which is located at the southeast intersection of Blue Oaks Boulevard and Wood Creek Oaks Boulevard. The Campus Oaks Town Center is the commercial portion of the mixed-use Campus Oaks Master Plan area and was approved through the major project permit process in 2018. The MPP Stage 1 approved the site plan and building footprints, and the MPP Stage 2 approved building elevations for 9 of the 16 buildings in the center. 
A tentative map was also approved with the MPP to subdivide the property into 15 lots. Most of the northern half of the site is constructed and currently in operation, including the Nugget Market. The southern half and the eastern portion across Roseville Parkway is currently vacant. The proposed project is located in the southern area of the site on a 1.7 acre portion and is shaded in red on this slide. An MPP stage one modification and stage two is requested to allow the development of a new retail building that will be occupied by Hayes Hardware. The MPP stage one modification will change the original site plan, which is shown here on the left, by adding a new building for Ace Hardware in the area highlighted in red, and as shown in the proposed site plan on the right. The approved daycare building that is to the west of Ace Hardware will be reoriented, but this building, along with the others that are shown in yellow, are shown for conceptual purposes only and will require separate MPP approvals. The Ace Hardware building will be approximately 14,000 square feet with the 6,400 square foot outdoor garden center to the east of the building. The building will be located behind the Nugget Market separated by an internal dry aisle. This is the portion of the site plan that is proposed for construction and a revised version was distributed to the commissioners tonight that shows a continuation of the sidewalk on the southwest corner of the site that will connect to the existing sidewalk there. The building will be set back approximately 190 feet away from Painted Desert Drive to the south and about 40 feet away from the drive aisle to the north with the front of the building facing Painted Desert. A loading dock is proposed on the back which will have a covered receiving area screened with an 18 foot tall stucco wall. The remainder of the loading dock will be screened with an 8 foot tall masonry wall with the stucco finish. The project will provide 92 parking spaces which exceeds the zoning ordinance parking requirement. There will be minor modifications to the approved driveway locations on Painted Desert and on the drive aisle to the north, but connectivity between the parcels will be, be maintained and there will be internal drive aisles that connect the shared parking areas. These are the proposed elevations which are consistent with the modern agrarian design concept developed for the center. There is variation in wall planes and height to break up the building structure and provide visual interest. The building incorporates many of the materials used throughout the center including stucco, wood veneer siding, and metal roofs, as well as a similar paint palette, which includes neutral and earth tones and a red accent color. The outdoor garden center will be enclosed with the metal fence and will feature a wooden trellis. And on the building frontage, there will be a 1,200 square foot covered outdoor display area. The north or back elevation will consist of a metal roll-up door for the loading dock area. The proposed screen wall and adjacent landscaping will minimize views of this area and roll-up door as encouraged by the community design guidelines. And as mentioned, the screen wall will have a stucco finish painted to match the building. Landscaping for the center was approved with the original MPP and the project will maintain the required 25 foot wide landscape planner for Painted Desert Drive. A seven and a half foot wide landscape planner will be constructed adjacent to the loading dog area, which will consist of London plane trees to provide screening. Also, landscaping in the parking lot will meet the 50% minimum parking lot shading requirements. Overall, the landscape plan is consistent with the plant palette used throughout the center. Early notification of the project was posted on the Arcona website, and the public hearing notice was mailed to a 300-foot radius, published in the Press Tribune, and on the Arcona website. After a publication of the staff report, staff did receive one comment letter from a member of the public which was provided to the Planning Commission prior to this meeting. The comments were regarding the Paseo and sidewalk connections that are either already installed or do not pertain to the ACE hardware property and will be the responsibility of future development projects. In regards to CEQA, an addendum to the HP Master Plan EIR was prepared as part of the original MPP approval, which evaluated the impact of development of the Campus Oaks Town Center. The proposed project was found to be substantially consistent with this previously evaluated project and no further environmental review was required. In conclusion, staff finds the proposed modifications are substantially consistent with the intent of the original approval and the project complies with the zoning ordinance, general plan, HP Campus Oaks master plan and the community design guidelines. Staff recommends the planning commission adopt the required findings of fact and approve the MPP Stage 1 modification and MPP Stage 2 subject to the recommended conditions of approval with the revised Exhibit A. That concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Kenny. Commissioners, are there any questions of staff at this time? I had a question. It might be for both staff and um, the applicant. Um, 
On the Paseo adjacent to the uh, the yard, I know we've got an eight foot iron fence and there's a five foot buffer. And on the civil sheet, there's actually a two foot retaining wall. So the site's two feet lower than the walkway area. Um, if you look on the Morton Patalo page three of four, it's section two. The east boundary section shows where the garden area is two feet below where the Paseo and there's a five foot landscape area. And then the landscape plans show what I'm assuming is either low planting or grass or some sort of really low vegetation. <clears throat> the question I have is, with that Paseo having a lot of traffic possibly coming right next to garden, is there a problem with uh, theft or damage? Um, would maybe some mid-height landscape addition to that help reduce the chances of that, or would that just help criminals hide spots uh, so i'm just raising that as a question both to the applicant and as to planning to just something that to consider possibly as a discussion item does it make sense what i discussed about the location of it okay. yeah yeah i see what you're saying in that um the garden action the garden area would actually be a little bit lower than um the paseo right um yeah, I'd have to look at the landscape. A bit more. And the landscape shows just something that's either low shrub or it's a, you know, a low grass type element. Yeah, I don't think we fully have, you know, um, solidified exactly what kind of shrubs would be going in there. Okay. Um, and it might be better to have it low shrubs with the eight foot fence. You know, you, it, it is a good buffer, the fence is, but I'm just worried about people reaching in through the fence and grabbing a tree and throwing it over, you know, so I, trying to think of some, some way to minimize any possible future vandalism that could occur, so. Yeah, mostly what I'm seeing in terms of the, the, the shrubs and grasses, it, it looks like they're, you know, a maximum of, of five feet tall, so three to five feet. Um, I think we do want to provide, you know, some sort of, you know, kind of greenery there in order to soften the views of the garden center. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we can make sure we keep an eye on, you know, how tall that those those shrubs could get. Maybe we keep them under three feet in height or something like that to to make sure we still have some visibility and people can't, you know, hide back there in mm -hmm. terms of the uh, surveillance and security when the five foot buffer gives a really good buffer zone it's i mean people have to really work to get through that five feet to try and get to the fence line so yeah, yeah. i just bring it i'm bringing it up as a question to, if it's something that was thought about by the applicant i think and the also, design team um just looking at the grading plan it looks like the garden area is about 119.4 uh, and then most of the um the wall i think varies in height Two. So some in some right. areas we could be up to two feet, but other areas be it, flat. It, yeah, it might be yep. pretty close to flat. So we can definitely keep an eye on that as we get you know more into the improvement plan stage. Sure. And, yeah. Okay. Mr. Covington. Yes, I had a question also, and I'm not sure if this is the right time for it or if it's for the future project. My concern was really more regarding the parking and driving area around the daycare entrance, um, just because I have kids and <laughs> the, the pickup drop off and parking around the entrance of a daycare can sometimes get a little crowded. So with the repositioning of it and the change of the different building pads in the future phases, I'm assuming first that there will be enough parking for all. Um, I know the staff report, I think focused on parking for Ace Hardware, but I was looking more for the future ones and so that's why i don't know if this is the right time for that question or if that that's for the future yeah it's really it, it is for the future that we don't know at this point to, to be honest we get inquiries for other uses other than a daycare okay. on those parcels all the time uh recently and i don't know that the the developer has kind of pinned down exactly what the uses to the west of the ace hardware are going to be that daycare was put there um, with the original master plan and at this point, it's a placeholder. So they will still be required to come in with a major project permit stage two and a, uh, and a probably a stage one modification. So the ultimate configuration of any use on that parcel will be coming back for the, to the Planning Commission. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we'll make sure parking and circulation are addressed. Thanks. 
Any other questions from the commission? Okay, with that, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing and I'd invite the applicant to come forward and address the commission, maybe answer some of the questions that Commissioner Martin had on the security issue as well. Uh, thank you. My name is Tom Town. I'm with Sister and Sister Construction. We're the uh, design build contractor working on behalf of the applicant, um, Warner Properties. Uh, Warner Properties is uh, a local family owned business. They have uh, now four Ace Hardware's, um, Granite Bay, Lake of the Pines, Midtown Sacramento, and, and now recently on any sack. So this would be their fifth store that they're looking to open. Um, I want to thank Kenny and, uh, and staff and uh, appreciate your consideration. Um, and I can answer any questions just on, regarding the landscaping along the Paseo. Um, that's off the property line, so that five-foot buffer is actually belongs to the Paseo. So I'm, I'm not sure how that would affect what decisions are made there. It's, it's part of the master plan at this point. Mm. Correct. Should I stab I, questions? I, or? I, think what, I think what we would do in that case is when the, when the developer on the parcel one thing that's a little bit unique um, is that parcel to the east uh, is, is a different owner. So if you, if you recall, I'm maybe actually you won't. I don't know if any of you will, will recall. Armstrong Development was the original developer of the entire uh, center. Um, when the first in, the first major project permit entitlement came through, Armstrong Development was the uh, the developer of the entire 20 plus acre site. Um, subsequent to the approval uh, by Planning Commission and City Council. Uh, the, the way the deal fell through, they only purchased the northern part of the site. Um, Nugget is owned by one party. The parcel, uh, the original developer, BBC Roseville, um, currently owns the, the parcel you're looking at now and the parcel to the west, and then another owner owns the parcel to the east. So it's, there's multiple owners now in the center. And so when we get to the major project permit for that parcel to the east, uh, the full design of the Paseo, according to the master plan guidelines, that'll be a condition of approval for that project. And I think at that point, after listening to, to Commissioner Martin's comments, we're going to have to work with the, the Ace Hardware folks um, on what an appropriate landscaping buffer is uh, between the, in, in that five feet, mm -hmm. um, that five foot area. So we'll make sure that there's coordination between the two, because I think that is an important thing, security uh, for their garden center but also what we're going to be looking for um, as far as aesthetics uh, as well and the safety component with not having you know um, refuges for people to to kind of tuck back in there on the paseo unless i'm reading this wrong this is... any other questions of staff for the applicant at this time i have a question for the applicant um, i'm not too sure if you can answer this uh, it's not uh, connected with the construction element of it it's more connected with ace hardware um, Ace Hardware already has a, a store in Roseville on Harding Boulevard. Will this new development affect it in any way, or is it planning? I don't know if you can answer that or not. Do you want to answer that, Brett? Uh, Just uh, about how Ace yeah, works? Yeah, we've already got approval from Ace. They've approved the, the site in this location as well as our uh, the other Roseville location that is open right now. To do okay, so is it connected in some way to, to the other uh, location, or it's an independent They're your independent. franchise? Okay. Yeah, so it's not one of the four we currently own. It's an, another franchisee that has the store, uh, but Ace has approved everything for us to go into this location. And he has as well, right? Yes. Yeah, he's already signed off on us going in there as well. All right. Okay. Good to know. And just my other comment is I'm uh, very happy with the design of the uh, building. I think it fits the area very well. Good quality design for Ace Hardware. So good to see. Any other questions for the applicant? Yeah, we, uh, sorry, we, we used um, Morton Patalo and Borges on uh, Architects who have worked very closely in that Campus Oaks project, so they're very familiar with the design, and we were lucky enough to retain them as the architect and engineer. Very good. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions for the applicant, I'll go ahead and open the public comment period, and this is the time for anyone in the public that would like to come forward and address the commission on this item. Seeing that, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Commissioners, is there any other questions you have of staff or comments before we? No question, but just one comment. Uh, Kenny, thanks for the presentation. And uh, same sentiments as well. 
Uh, this is going to be a great project coming in for that town center area. It's, it's a nice, smaller building um, than what was previously proposed with the large gym on the corner, moving that to next to Nugget between those two buildings or on the outside of the other building. And uh, having this building, they're kind of, uh, it, they're good block elements for that town center. And I, I'm excited for that project to come in here. It's going to be great. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, I live about a minute and a half drive from uh, the project site, and I know that the people on this that side of Roseville are going to be very happy uh, to have this opportunity. So I want to say thank you for uh, identifying that site, and it, I, I think it's going to be great. I'm going to echo some of the comments that have been made. I think it's a great use on this side of town. I think it's something that a lot of the residents have been looking for, and it is a very attractive building. So with that, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing, and would anyone like to make a motion? I would make a motion to adopt the two findings of fact and approve the major project permit stage one modification, subject to eight conditions of approval, and adopt the two findings of fact and approve the major project permit stage two, uh, subject to 72 conditions of approval, and that's... Uh, for the major project permit stage one modification and major project permit stage two at 7890 Painted Desert Drive. And for the record, that's file PL210252. Commissioner Pryor has made the motion. Do I have a second? A second. I, I just, before the commission takes a vote, just to clarify, there's the revised exhibit um, A that was provided to the planning commission. So I just want to clarify if your motion is to approve subject to the subject revised, to revised exhibit. Exhibit, correct, yes. Thank okay, you. so that was your motion and then. Still stands. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Pryor has made a motion with revised exhibits and uh, Commissioner Martin has seconded. Could we have a roll call, please? Yes. Um, Vice Chair Martin? Yes. Commissioner hagen -Jose? Yes. Commissioner Covington? Yes. Commissioner Pryor? Yes. And Chair Jensen? Yes. So the motion is approved. There is a 10-day appeal period for this item. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Commission staff reports. Um, Greg? Yes, thank you, Chair Jensen. Um, just I want to report out that we will be having meetings uh, during the two um, commission dates in February, the 10th and the 24th. So we have items uh, coming for you on those two meetings. I also want to give you a quick uh, update on some of the activities we're doing regarding um, the housing element uh, implementation. We have, a, we have a specific plan land use amendment policy that we're working on. We've had a recent meeting with the, the uh, BIA, and so we've got a few, few things to straighten out on that um, with, with that uh, regard. But we will, that item will be coming before the Planning Commission for recommendation on the City Council probably sometime in the March time period. Um, it was it was part of the it was one of the the different implementation strategies that we had originally with the with the housing element, where in the future if somebody comes in with a uh, specific plan amendment um, and they have high density sites that aren't up to the either 25 or 30 units an acre, we're, we're going to ask them to uh, or negotiate with them to increase the densities so we can start getting a few more units uh, allocated on some of the high density sites. Um, so we're working on that. There's also something that we're currently working on, and that's uh, what's known as a pro-housing designation. So uh, last summer, the California Department of Housing and Community Development uh, released application requirements for what, what's known as a pro-housing designation. And as the name implies, a jurisdiction with this certification has shown that, that they have policies and programs that accelerate housing production. So the benefit of having this designation is that it gives preference or additional points um, for various state-funded programs, uh, including programs used by affordable housing developers and local jurisdictions um, when they apply for grants. It, it also helps with uh, tax credit allocation applications. So it would be a, a real benefit to some of our affordable housing builders um, as they try and get funding to build some of their, uh, their projects. So the, uh, um, the application requires a resolution adopted by city council. So we're working on that. Um, we weren't going to bring that before the Planning Commission primarily because uh, it's really a doc it, it, the effort is really to document all of the city's programs that we currently have in place. So there are no new programs, new policies that are required for us. Uh, we think we meet all the criteria for this designation with the housing element that's adopted. So all of the policies that have already come before you, plus everything that the, um, uh, our housing uh, division uh, here at the city um, already does, 
Uh, so we're, we've got a few little issues there to work out. We have a technical advise, uh, assistance meeting with HCD on Monday coming up uh, to talk to them because we're trying to get uh, make sure we're on the right path for this. Um, but I just didn't want you to be surprised uh, if you see that going to city council, but we're, we're working on that. Uh, we think we should be successful, um, but I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on that. And I think that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Commission, uh, any questions? Uh, I, I forgot, last Wednesday, the city council approved the Sierra View uh, subdivision project and the WB41 uh, Sierra Vista specific plan, um, uh, land use and specific plan amendment that came before the uh, planning commission in December, if you recall. So your recommendation was um, approved. Thanks, Greg. Commission, any questions of staff? Okay, seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. All right. Should do it like an overrun.